We'll have ourselves another warm afternoon, dare we say hot in a couple of areas. 80s and a couple of low 90s, not out of the question. And later in the day and into the night, we'll have the chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms out west at first, and moving to the southeast overnight. A few of these storms could be strong to severe, so you will want to keep that in mind. Lows tonight in the 60s to the east, 50s out west. We'll talk about the rest of your forecast in a little bit, but until then, midday in Kelloland starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Midday in Kelloland. A man accused of murdering three people in the town of Scotland, South Dakota, will be back in court tomorrow. We have details on what you can expect. And a survivor found a day after her apartment building collapsed in Davenport, Iowa. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. The man accused of murdering three people in the town of Scotland plans to plead guilty. 43-year-old Francis Lange went into a home in November 2021. According to court documents, he shot everyone inside, including a child. He originally pleaded not guilty to murder and attempted murder, but now a change of plea hearing is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. Two people were hospitalized after their plane crashed near Larchwood, Iowa. The Lyon County Sheriff's Office said they received a call on Monday after 1 o'clock p.m. of a single-engine airplane crash south of the Larchwood Airport runway. Police say that two people were in the plane at the time of the crash. Both were taken to a Sioux Falls hospital. One was taken by ambulance for minor injuries. The other was airlifted for serious injuries considered not life-threatening. Authorities are still investigating the crash. A Sioux Falls woman is in the Minnehaha County Jail accused of kidnapping a child. Investigators say an officer noticed Jewel Geary walking in the middle of Cliff Avenue around 4.30 Sunday morning. She had a small child with her. Police say she had been staying with someone and had grabbed the child and left. She is also accused of abuse. Turning to weather, we have opportunities for heavier weather in the near future, don't we, Adam? Yeah, not just in the near future, but also in the midterm and even the long range outlook for that matter. Not the greatest sounding forecast, but we'll try and find a silver lining now and again. We'll start in Eureka on this Tuesday afternoon, 79 in a west wind at five miles per hour. Beautiful start to the second half of your day up in Eureka or even here in Sioux Falls for that matter with some blue skies above 82 at the airport south wind to 10 miles per hour great day to maybe head up over to Falls Park the sooner the better though as we are going to be keeping an eye on the evening and overnight time frame 86 right now in Mitchell 85 for Aberdeen and Sisseton upper 70s Mobridge to Watertown as well as Pier and Pate Rapid City 78 73 as you head towards Spearfish. Winds are terrible, around 10 to 15 miles per hour in eastern and southeastern Kelloland. Elsewhere, light and variable. So overall, again, not a bad start to the rest of your day. Satellite and radar is quiet for now. That's the key phrase, as we do have the opportunity for a little more activity this evening and then going into the rest of your night as well. There's an upper level trough that's going to try and act as a bit of a focal point for activity, especially the further south and east you go later this evening and into the night. But for the rest of your afternoon, we're talking about highs in the 80s to low 90s in southeastern Kilauean, a light breeze in general out of the southwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. To the northeast, more of the same, 80s and low 90s with a decent bit of sunshine. I think you guys stay mainly dry even by night as we go into the Tuesday night outlook. For the west, however, uh, the closer to the Missouri River Valley you are, you're mainly dry to the west toward the hills. We do have that chance for showers and thunderstorms, especially later in the day. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast in a little bit. Thank you, Adam. A survivor has been found a full day after the collapse of an apartment building in Davenport, Iowa. As CBS News correspondent Roxana Saberi reports, the discovery comes as the building was ready to be demolished. There she is. Cheers echoed through the crowd of onlookers in Davenport Monday after a missing woman poked her head out of a fourth floor window about 24 hours after her building partially collapsed. They're getting her. Families say this is Lisa Brooks. Firefighters rescued her on Monday evening, hours before the building's demolition was scheduled for Tuesday morning. A family member said Brooks hid under the couch when the building gave way, and a reported natural gas leak may have caused her to pass out. The frickin' building just collapsed. When first responders arrived at the scene Sunday, they discovered the back of the wall of the six-story building torn away, exposing personal belongings inside. 
Canine teams helped search for residents, and crews rescued at least eight. I have no, uh, no known individuals are trapped in that facility. But concerns grew when the building was set to be demolished before Brooks was discovered. Sitting there, my heart dropped to my big toes. Her nephew said his family had been searching for her since the collapse, and now that she's safe, they're worried others may be left behind. There's still people out here and their loved ones are missing. And he's not the only one. On Monday night, people protested the demolition and demanded accountability. After that crack got bigger, I decided it was time to go. It comes as a former resident posted videos complaining of cracks in the walls and saying the more than century old building needed repairs. CBS News has reached out to the landlord, but has yet to hear back. The fire department had ordered the owner to make repairs and permitted work was underway. Roxana Saberi, CBS News. The mayor of Davenport just released a statement saying five people remain unaccounted for, including two people who could still be in the wreckage of the partly collapsed apartment building. Both the mayor and the police chief confirmed the numbers at a news conference this morning. Nine people were injured when gunfire erupted along a beachside promenade in Hollywood, Florida, sending people frantically running for cover at the crowded beach on Memorial Day. Police and witnesses said the shooting began as a group of people fought in front of a busy stretch of shops on the Hollywood Oceanfront Boardwalk, a, a broadwalk, about 7 o'clock p.m. yesterday. All the victims were in stable condition. The youngest victim was reported to be only one years old. Video from the scene showed a man wearing a yellow hoodie pull out a gun and start firing before he ran from the scene. Activists in the LGBTQ plus community are calling for new ways to mobilize against threats to their long fight for equality. This comes after Target announced last week that it removed some products and relocated its pride displays to the back of certain stores in the South after protesters confronted workers in stores. Target is the latest company to face backlash over its support for the community. Nearly 500 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been introduced in state legislatures around the country this year.